Hello everyone, myself Dr. Ranjit Kumar Gatla, working as an associate professor in the department of electrical and electronics engineering. So in today's class, we are going to discuss the definition and terminology related to the concept of magnetic circuits. So first of all, uh, we should know the differences between the electrical and magnetic circuits so that it will be easy to understand the, the concepts of the magnetic circuits. Because uh, till now we have discussed uh, the electrical circuits, I mean the various laws associated with the electrical circuits and various theorems associated with the electrical circuits and also uh, we have seen various network reduction techniques related to the electrical circuits. So now we are going to discuss about the, the magnetic circuits. So here I have mentioned some uh, basic differences between the electrical and magnetic circuits. Right. So, first of all, let me start with the electrical circuits because we are well aware about the electrical circuits and when compared to the electrical circuits, so what are the similarities and what are the differences in the magnetic circuits over the electrical circuits that we will discuss. Right. So, in the first point, uh, in the electrical circuits, so a, I mean uh, a closed path of current, of course, the current will flow only when there is a closed path. Right. And here, here a closed path of magnetic flux. Right, oh, which means here whatever the current here uh, it is uh, there, I mean the current flowing through that particular circuit, electrical circuit. So here the magnetic flux will flow, okay, around a closed path of the magnetic circuits. So this is one first point. And the second point here the current is equal to EMF by resistance, that is electromotive force EMF means, right, because it is an electrical circuit, right. So as you know, voltage by resistance, but in usually because of course here also sometimes we can uh, make it as a, a voltage but uh, uh, to understand the difference between the magnetic and electrical circuit so here i am using the term which has a electromotive force right so current is equal to emf by resistance which means the current flowing through this closed path which is equal to emf by resistance then here this is the flux the flux will flow then what is flux flux is equal to same like similarly like in the current MMF by reluctance, right? So instead of the resistance, here we use a term as a reluctance, which means the reluctance is nothing but uh, the opposition uh, force of the flux. Here the resistance means opposition force for the current. Okay, so which means our, uh, it is a uh, tendency to oppose the flow of current, and here also it is a tendency to oppose the uh, what is that uh, flow of flux. Right. So, MMF means a magnetomotive force by the reluctance and of course as we know the current is measured in terms of amperes and the flux is measured in terms of fibers. Okay. So, see here just you, you just try to compare because current and flux. Okay. So, here flux is equal to MMF by reluctance and here current is equal to MMF by resistance and of course we know that flux is measured in fibers and current is measured in amperes. Then the current flow through the circuit EMF is a force because of which current flows through the circuit. The same thing here also, the flux does not flow, okay, actually the, the, the flux does not flow, but sets up in the magnetic circuits, okay. So like the current here, the flux does not flow because it is linking with that, uh, the magnetic circuit. So that's what here, it is sets up in the magnetic circuit and, EMF and, and the um, uh, magnetomotive force is force because of which the flux is set up in the magnetic circuit, okay, because here it is because of the uh, EMF force because the current flow through the circuit, but here it is the flux is set up in the magnetic circuit. So we should not say like the flux flow, okay, flow of flux, something like that, right? Of course, uh, that's what here, as I mentioned here, resistance opposes the flow of current and reluct uh, reluctance opposes the flow of flux, right? And here it is the current density. We know that J is equal to uh, what is by I by A. This is current by uh, the cross sectional area of that particular conductor. And here flux is equal to B is equal to phi by A. So which means uh, phi is the uh, the flux and A is the again the area of cross section of the particular uh, magnetic uh, uh, material. Okay. Then here the electrical lines force moves uh, upward. I mean moves outwards for positive and inwards for the uh, negative charges, which means uh, uh, oppose means uh, it will uh, outwards from the positive charges and uh, uh, inwards for the negative charges and here uh, in in case of magnetic lines it is uh, move from uh, north to south line. So these are the some basics about the the difference between the magnetic circuit and the electrical circuit. So now coming to the main topic right. So 
now maybe you 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 may get to understand okay uh, what is uh, magnetic circuit and what is electrical circuit right okay so by using these uh, differences you can uh, define by using any with respect to any one of the point uh, which i have listed in the differences between the electrical and magnetic circuits then coming to the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction right so maybe you may get the question like define the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction right so here this is the definition that i have mentioned here of course later on we will discuss in detail uh, what are the various uh, faraday's law of electromagnetic inductions so here the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction okay of course i mean usually uh, or simply we can also call it as a uh, the faraday's laws okay of course the faraday's laws which are related to the electromagnetic induction only okay so that's why instead of mentioning faraday's law of electromagnetic induction simply we can also call it as a, a faraday's laws right so because these are the some uh, basic laws of the electromagnetism right so uh, which will help us to predict how the magnetic field uh, uh, would interact with the electrical circuit okay to produce an emf and this phenomena is uh, known as electromagnetic induction right so actually this faraday's law of uh, these faraday's laws deals with the uh, the electromagnetic induction okay so which means how the magnetic field would interact with the electrical circuit okay to produce an electrical uh, to produce an electromotive force so which means actually the magnetic field is caused to produce the emf so how the magnetic field is caused to produce the emf and how much emf it will produce i mean the amount of the emf okay how to quantify the emf produced by the uh, the magnetic field okay so these two uh, is deals with, uh, i mean uh, uh, these two parameters will address by the, the faraday's law right so of course there are uh, two different types of uh, i mean basically there are two uh, laws are there okay so one is the faraday's law or the faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction and faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction right so the first law describes uh, the in, uh, what is that the induction of emf in the conductor which means how an emf will be induced in the conductor uh, that uh, i mean address the first law and the second law is quantify the emf produced in the conductor okay so which means how much emf is produced in the in the particular conductor okay so that uh, the second law uh, will help us to quantify the amount of emf produced in the conductor so this is about the, the faraday's uh, the faraday's law uh, or the faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction and faraday's uh, second law of electromagnetic induction then first we will uh, go to the the faraday's law of, uh, the faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction so here uh, as we know the faraday's law or the faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction will give the information or will will address how uh, the magnetic field will produce an electromotive force right so here understanding of the electromagnetic inductions are based on the uh, of course uh, some series of experiments that they have carried and uh, uh, based on the experimental observation okay so the faraday's concluded that an emf induced in the coil when the magnetic flux across the coil changes with time which means the emf induced in that particular coil is proportional to the the rate of change of the flux in that particular coil okay so which means when i mean uh, which is nothing but whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field then an emf or, or the electromotive a force is induced across that particular conductor or across that particular coil right and if the particular conductor circuit or the coil is closed okay then the current is induced in that particular coil also so that is what the faraday's law first law or simply you can you can just uh, uh, define the faraday's law uh, from here which means whenever a whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field and emf is induced in the coil and if the conductor circuit is closed then the current is also induced in that particular coil this is the faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction which means here as you can see here of course uh, this is uh, the field okay so this is the field is changing with respect to the time because here uh, the field is moving of course the conductor is stationary okay then which means there is a change in or or we are placing the conductor okay in a changing magnetic field or in a varying magnetic field then an emf will produce across this uh, coil okay and if the coil is uh, 
uh, close the circuit, then and an current will flow through the particular circuit. So this is what uh, the Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction, right? And of course here, for simple understanding, I have considered the various cases, right? So in this case, in this case here, this uh, particular the field. Okay, so let us consider, of course, how the magnetic field will produce. Of course, let us consider here there is a magnet. So due to this, uh, the, the magnetic field is produced. And here the magnet is moving towards this particular coil. Of course, here the coil is stationary and the field is moving towards the, the coil, which means there is a change in magnetic field. Okay. So, so that an EMF is induced across the coil. Right. And in the second case, okay. So here, of course, here also similarly, but here the, uh, the bar magnet is moving out of the coil. Okay. The bar magnet is moving out of the coil. So, which means here the direction is opposite to the the direction of the magnet uh, magnet bar in the first case okay or in the case a so that's why here the direction of the current is also changing as you can see here in this case the direction of the current is like this okay but in this case because here the coil is moving towards the uh, sorry the magnet is moving towards the sorry the magnet is moving towards the coil and here in the second case the magnet is moving away from the coil so that the direction of the current will change okay i will let you know okay how we can uh, find the direction of the current okay so that we will discuss later then the current induced in this opposite direction with respect to the the first case right in the second case of course here the coil i mean the coil is station of course in all these cases so let us consider the coil is stationary of course, here the coil is stationary, even though it is the uh, the coil is stationary and the magnetic bar is also stationary, even though the magnetic bar is very near to the coil, but there is no current flow through this particular or there is no induced EMF produced across this coil because when there is a change in magnetic field, then only an EMF is induced in the coil because here both are stationary. So, which means there is no change in the field. There is no change in the magnetic field. So, that's why we, we won't get any EMF induced across this coil so that we won't get any current. And in the third case, or in the fourth case also, of course, it is away from the, I mean, little bit uh, far away from the coil, this magnetic bar, but even though this is stationary, okay, so then there is no change in magnetic field, of course, yeah, the, yeah, sorry. So, in the fourth case, of course, the magnet is stationary, but the coil is moving towards the, the magnet, so which means the coil is moving. Of course, um, uh, any one of the, the I mean, uh, coil or the magnet is moving, then there will be a change in magnetic field so that the EMF is induced. So, of course, here the magnet is stationary, but the coil is moving. So, that's why then EMF is induced in this particular coil. Okay. So, that the current will flow through the particular coil. Right. So, that is what uh, here I am uh, trying to uh, explain uh, the Faraday's law or the Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction. So, when if you place a coil in a change in magnetic field, then an EMF is induced across the coil. If the coil is closed the circuit, then current is also induced, induced in the coil. So that is the concept of the Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction. Uh, then, yeah, so here uh, there are few ways, the, what are the ways that we have discussed here. The first one is by rotating the coil relative to the magnet. So because here the coil is rotating, the map magnet. And by moving the coil into or out of the magnetic field, of course, here again the coil is moving. Okay. So, of course, in this case also you will get the uh, EMF. And by changing the area of the coil placed in the magnetic field. So, in this case also, we will. Okay. And by moving a magnet towards or away from the coil, in this case also, which means here these are the factors that can affect, uh, okay, these are the factors that can affect uh, the amount of uh, EMF induced uh, across the coil. Right. So, this is what. Mm. Then, coming to the Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction. So, as we discussed, uh, this uh, second law is deals with the uh, to quantify the amount of EMF produced by that coil. Because in the first law, how the EMF is induced that we have discussed. In the second law, so, not how, okay, how to quantify the EMF produced by that particular coil. Right. So, how to quantify the produce, I mean the EMF produced by that coil is EMF is directly proportional to the, the rate of change of flux. Okay, the EMF electromotive force is directly proportional to the EMF is directly proportional to the, the rate of change of flux or the uh, what is the change in flux with respect to the time. So, that is what uh, 
or the amount of the uh, the emf induced in that particular uh, coil is depends right then if you eliminate this uh, what is that the proportionality then emf is equal to the constant term n okay of course here minus n i will let you know later why here it is minus n into dt so here n is the number of turns here it is a constant the number of turns for a particular coil of course the number of turns for a particular coil is constant which means here not only the rate of change of uh, flux here the emf induced in the particular coil is also depends on the number of turns of the particular coil right then coming to the the negative sign so this negative sign uh, if you want to understand why here uh, the negative sign then we must know another law which is lenz law okay so according to this lenz law it states that the polarity of induced emf a is such that it tends to produce a current which opposes the change in magnetic flux that produced it right because here of course the current and the flux is also i mean uh, both are directly proportional so which means here the polarity of the induced emf is such that it tends to produce a current because as we know initially the, if there is a change in field then definitely there will be an emf is induced in that particular uh, coil and if the coil is closed then the current will also induced in that particular coil and the current produced okay are the current flowing through the coil because of the induced emf in that particular coil okay which opposes the change in the magnetic flux that produced because of course the flux also having some direction okay and the current will opposes the magnetic flux produced in it so that's why here uh, we use the negative sign okay to represent the emf produced by that particular uh, uh, what is that uh, across the coil which is equal to minus n into d phi by dt so this is about the lens then next coming to the the concept of self inductance and mutual inductance you may get the question like define self in or define self inductance or define mutual inductance or define the principle of self inductance and define the principle of mutual inductance okay and write down the equation for the uh, the self in uh, the self induced emf okay and define the equation for the mutually induced emf okay and define the equation for the self inductance and define the equation for the mutual inductance like these questions you may get based on this uh, the concept of self and mutual inductance so before that first of all we should know what is mean by the inductance right so we already studied in uh, the electrical circuits okay here also the same thing uh, the inductance means okay so here the induction or the induction in is the magnetic field which is proportional to the area of change of the magnetic field okay or uh, sometimes this induction is also known as the inductance okay so how to represent this inductor or inductance which is which is represented by l okay so in another terms in case of self inductance that emf okay electromotive force is also equal to minus l into di by dt or minus n into d phi by dt so both are same so here what are the factors that affect on the uh, the inductor okay so that is one is the number of turns that we know already and the material used for this particular core and the shape of the core is also uh, here uh, plays a important role that affects the inductance either it may be uh, self inductance or it may be mutual inductance this is just a concept of inductance right the next one is now we are going to discuss about the self inductance and mutual inductance the self inductance is nothing but okay so the flux produced by the uh, coil is linking with okay uh, uh, or the the coil is linking with the flux produced by itself so that that is called as a self inductance self inductance or the self induction right so which means the coil is linking with the flux produced by itself okay which means of course uh, uh, because of that an emf is induced and the same concept again when coming to the mutual induction okay mutual induction the flux produced by the one coil is linking with the another coil so that an emf is induced in the another coil so that is called as a mutual inductance right so let me go with uh, let me go in detail what is self inductance and what is uh, mutual inductance 
right so that's what as i mentioned self inductance means the coil induces emf themselves the coil induces emf themselves because of the it's uh, uh, the uh, the coil linking uh, the flux produced by itself okay so if there is a change in magnetic flux through that then um, uh, through that particular coil and because of this the current will induced in that coil by itself okay so once the current get induced then the current is tries to oppose the flux in the same way uh, as we i mean according to the the lens law right which means if there is a change in the magnetic flux through that particular coil okay and because of the change in the magnetic flux through that particular coil of course an emf is induced in that particular coil if the coil is closed circuit then the current will induced in that particular coil by itself okay so once the current get induced then this particular current tries to opposes the flux produced by that particular coil okay so that's why here uh, we usually write emf uh, which is equal to just now minus n into d5 by dt as i mentioned here the flux is also directly proportional to i because the amount of the current flowing through that particular coil is depends on uh, the flux okay so this particular phenomenon is called as a self inductance this particular phenomenon is called as a self inductance which means when there is a change in the current or the magnetic flux of the coil okay an opposed induced emf is produced okay so this is the concept of the the self inductance right then coming to the uh, mutual inductance so in the mutual inductance means here in the mutual inductance it interacts one coil magnetic field on another coil and it induces the voltage in the adjacent coil okay so which means the mutual inductance is nothing but the interaction of the one coil magnetic field on another which means of course uh, for uh, for example let us consider uh, these are the two coils one is this pink one and another one is this blue one okay so um, let us just apply a, a particular voltage to this particular winding okay so that uh, uh, so that here the current will flow through that particular circuit so because of this change in current then an uh, an uh, uh, flux will produce uh, by this particular circuit and this flux produced by the let us consider this is the primary winding and the flux produced by the primary winding is linking with the secondary winding okay then because of the change in flux in the secondary winding an emf is induced in the secondary winding so which means the emf induced across the secondary winding is because of the change in current in the primary winding so that is what here the interaction of one coil magnetic field on another coil and it induces a voltage in the adjacent coil the adjacent coil means here the secondary coil or we can also define the mutual inductance between the two coils is defined as the property of the coil due to which it opposes the change of current in another coil okay so which means it is a property of the coil due to which it opposes the change of the current in another coil when the current is uh, i mean which means because of the change of the current okay of course here as we know uh, the change in current will oppose okay change in current will oppose the flux produced by this particular coil okay so because of that change in current in the primary coil and emf is induced in the secondary coil because of the flux linkage between the primary and secondary coil so that is called the mutual inductance okay so here of course there are various ways that you can connect uh, these two coils because here one is primary and secondary okay and here uh, with the same core okay so here this is the primary and secondary and this is one inside another so this is primary or this is the secondary so like this we can and here the mutual inductance is i mean the amount of the mutual inductance is depends uh, is also i mean uh, depends on okay the distance between these two coils right because as you can see here these are the mutually coupled uh, coupled because i mean the distance between these two coil is less when compared to these two coils so here the mutual inductance is higher than here then now we will see what are the factors that affect the mutual inductance okay so here m is equal to i mean r in terms of i mean emf okay because there also before we have defined that uh, in case of self inductance emf is equal to uh, minus l into di by dt 
okay so here l is the the self inductance and in this case uh, emf is equal to minus m into uh, di by dt so here m is the the mutual inductance right okay so here of course uh, this sign the plus or uh, minus or the plus sign is depends on the direction of the currents which is flowing through these two coils that uh, we will discuss in the next topic uh, which is uh, the dot convention okay so now here it is uh, the dot convention right so the dot convention uh, is nothing but uh, which gives the details about the voltage polarities at the dotted terminal which means of course here uh, the same circuit okay the same this circuit we can also represent like this so this is the primary winding so this is i1 and this is v1 okay and this is l1 let us consider the self inductance of the primary winding and this is l2 and uh, similarly this is uh, i2 okay let us consider uh, and the voltage across here it is v2 right so we can represent like this then let us consider the same uh, concept i mean or uh, the same uh, circuit here if you can consider here the same circuit because this dot convention will uh, play i mean will uh, will uh, comes into the picture only when um, when there is a mutual inductance right so here let us consider here it is i1 and uh, i2 direction is like this let us consider and this is v1 and this is v2 let us consider like this okay so then uh, here it is l1 and here it is l2 and the mutual inductance between here it is m let us consider right so here if you i mean the dot convention suppose if i place dot here and here which means here the current entering into the first coil is at the dotted terminal and the current entering into the second coil is also at the dotted terminal so both are in the same direction so that's what then then let us consider here uh, the voltage the total voltage across the v1 so v1 which is equal to okay so of course here the voltage that will uh, the emf that will induce because of the self inductance present in this particular circuit so which means here it is l1 into di1 by dt and there is also an emf is induced because of the the flux uh, uh, i mean uh, the flux link uh, or uh, the uh, because of the the flux linkage that is produced by the secondary coil so which means here it is you will get the plus because both are the same direction then m into d i2 by dt this is the v1 similarly v2 which is equal to l2 into d i2 by dt plus m into d i1 by dt like this or otherwise for the same case okay so let us consider here in the second case the dot is here so in this case here in the first coil the current is entering through the dotted terminal but here the current is leaving from the dotted terminal because which means here both are in opposite direction so that here this equation will become v1 is equal to l1 into d i1 by dt minus m into d i2 by dt similarly here v2 is equal to l2 into d i1 by dt sorry uh, yeah minus here minus m into d i1 by dt so this is about the the dot convention right or you can just simply write this uh, particular statement is enough okay so suppose define the dot convention then the dot convention is a technique which gives the details about the voltage polarity at the dotted terminal this information is useful while, while writing the kvl equation so that's what here that i have written the kvl equation for these two circuits the primary and the secondary circuit so these are the some basic uh, definitions and terminologies in the magnetic circuit so in the next class we will discuss the next topic thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates